This is the final in a series of recordings on mixture designs and analysis. In the previous two videos, we talked about mixture designs with what we called regional constraints. That is, lower bounds on the total amount and upper bounds on the total amount of each component. And we call them regional constraints because they constrain the mixture to a subregion of the entire simplex. But there's another type of constraint that often occurs, and we tend to call these linear constraints. And what linear constraints are, they are on the total amount of some combination of the components. You know, as an example, let's suppose I have some total amount A and I don't want components I and J together to exceed A. Okay. And examples of this are fairly common, as I said, in science. And we're going to actually talk about this in jump. And I'm going to actually show you an example of what we call linear constraints. So what I'm do, going to do is I'm going to discuss two things. Linear constraints, actually I'm going to also discuss regional constraints and how to construct mixture designs in jump. So first I'm going to go to the DOE menu. There are two places to construct mixtures. Custom design and there's actually a mixture design platform. Uh, if you want to construct a traditional mixture design like a simplex centroid, you would then use the mixture platform. But I generally just use custom design. It's more flexible and easily handles mixture designs. So I'm going to open up custom design. And I'm going to start by creating the mine safety flare experiment. So our response is lumens. Oops, I spelled it right. And I want to maximize it. And I'm going to add four factors. And under add factor, I'm going to select mixture. Okay, so one of these is magnesium. sodium nitrate let's see sodium nitrate strontium nitrate and then finally binder stay consistent and capitalize them. Now notice in the factor table, this is where you put in your regional constraints. So mag is constrained from 40% to 60%. Strontium nitrate from 10% to 50%. In fact, both of the nitrates are 10% 50%. Okay. And then remember, binder is constrained from 3%, 8%, and of course these have to be entered as proportions in the table. When I click continue. I can define the model, and I'm going to do that in a moment, but first Notice there's an option to specify linear constraints. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to add in a, con a constraint. Suppose the chemist, let's see, I'm trying to decide what I want to do here. Let's say the chemists want the total amount of nitrate not to exceed 40%. We'll make it 45 to make it interesting. Okay. So 
I'm going to just put in one constraint. I can put in more, but let's say the nitrates can be no more than 45% of the total. As for the model, again, it can have no intercept. I'm going to add two-way nonlinear blending. And since this is my design, I'm going to add three-way nonlinear blending. Okay. Jump tells me it could create a design in as little as 14 terms. Okay, that seems a bit small to me. So what I'm going to do is specify 16, and I'm going to specify three center points. Okay. So at this point, this gives me 20 total runs. That's not bad considering all the constraints, and I'm studying four factors. I'm going to make the design. So jump is searching for a solution that will meet my constraints. Okay. So you'll notice that we have a design, and all of the individual settings stay within okay, their regional constraints. But also on top of that, the nitrates stay within their linear constraint of no more than 45%. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to do something I don't often do. But in the main report menu, I'm going to simul simulate a response to show you the analysis. So I'm going to make the table. Okay. So that's going to be my model. So notice Jump has saved a script that contains the model. It's saved another script that has your constraints in it. And it saves DOE dialog, which is allows you. In fact, I'll close the DOE dialog. Suppose I changed my mind and I wanted to go back and redo the design. All I'd have to do is run the script, and it would go back. I'm not going to actually do anything with this. I just wanted to show you what it does. So it goes back. You could then back up and change the experiment. Okay. So once I have my design, I'm then going to go to, um, actually, I'm just going to click and run the model script. Jump remembers what the model was from when I created the design. Since I did this in jump, let me get things out of the way. Also, I'll just click on one of the headers and go to the column info window. Notice it gives you the design rule, and it gives you the mixtures, and it also says it's going to do L pseudo component scaling. Okay. So we go to fit model, run the model. Again, this is simulated data, so I'm not trying to do any analysis of it. Therefore, we fit the model. And we could then use the profiler and so forth to optimize. So that's not bad. In 20 runs, I was able to fit a model that allowed the four pure component terms, all the binary terms, and the four three-way terms. And basically, that's how you generate uh, mixture designs. So my preference is to simply use custom design again. And when you add factors, just give them uh, the uh, mixture property. It's actually very easy to do. And that concludes our discussion of mixture designs.